Alright, let's check it. Gleb Alexandrov for creativeshrimp.com Hey, what's up? Today we'll be talking about how to create a handheld camera animation in Blender. This is the result, and after watching this tutorial, you'll be confident to create that kind of uh, handheld camera motion in Blender. In just a few moments, I'll be walking you through the exact steps that you need to take. Let's jump straight in, and let's get started by creating a camera. I guess it's pretty natural to start with camera, when you want to make a handheld camera motion. So press Shift A and select a camera. And after creating camera, I'm just going to position it by pressing G and moving it around. Then I'm gonna press 0 on the NOM part to switch to the camera view. And also press Shift F to navigate the camera around. That's a very easy way to point the camera where you want it. And what I'm gonna do now is to set up a camera controls. That will be just a few cubes that we'll use to move camera by parenting the camera to them. So feel free to go ahead and create a cube, either from the menu or by pressing Shift A. So I'm gonna select a cube, then select a camera and press Ctrl C uh, to copy the rotation. And that will allow me to copy the rotation from the camera to the cube. After that, let's jump into the cycle settings and disable the camera visibility as well as the diffuse and closing all other visibility. We're doing it because we don't want the cube to appear in the render. And now I'm gonna select the camera, then select the cube, then press Ctrl P and select object to set parent to the object. And for the sake of convenience, I'm gonna rename it to camera control. And when I move it around, you see that the camera is moving too. That's because now camera inherits the rotation and the location of the cube. Now I'm just duplicating the cube to create a secondary control and duplicate one more time to create a third controller. Now I'm gonna parent the first cube to the second one and the second one to the third one uh, to create a kind of a chain of parenting. And this image hopefully illustrates how this simple camera rig works. Starting from a camera we create a chain of parents. That will serve as a camera rig. Right, fine. And the next step is to set up a noise controller. And what it means is that we have just set up uh, the camera movement controller. And you can test it by dragging the cubes around. Uh, now we should create a noise controller, which will allow us to create a camera shake. I'm gonna create a cylinder to serve as an empty object. I'm deleting everything except uh, the top of it. And after that I'm applying the inset and deleting the central part of it. You know, I just wanna create a fancy looking stuff. Now let's copy the rotation from the camera by pressing Ctrl C one more time and position it near the camera. You can see me setting the parent to the cube again because I want this dummy to follow the motion of our main camera controllers. I hope it sounds reasonable. And the next step is to select this circle, select the camera and add a constraint. It will be the location constraint and after that the camera will inherit the motion not only of the cube controllers but also of this noise controller. Okay, looking good so far. And let's go ahead and create the actual noise. Let's animate the noise controller. First, I'm gonna select uh, the noise controller and create just one keyframe by pressing I and selecting location. In the dope sheet, you can see this keyframe created, but actually we'll need to jump into the graph editor and press N to open this tab to the right and then press Add Modifier and select Noise. That will animate a Z location keyframe using this fractal noise. And if you play the animation by pressing Alt-A, you'll see the effect. It's a very chaotic noise, you can see this noise controller moving. That's already a hell of a fun. I'm going to play with the strength of the noise to reduce it a bit and also with the scale to make it less chaotic. Let's play it once again and that's looking slightly better. Uh, what I'm gonna do after tweaking these settings, I'm gonna just crank up the depth. That will make uh, the noise more detailed, and that's what we need. We can scrub through the timeline, or just play the animation to preview it. Okay, so we constrained the camera to the noise controller, but that means that we can no longer move the camera, and that can be embarrassing, uh, but don't worry. 
the way around this is just to animate the camera controllers instead of the camera. That's why we created a chain link of the cubes. All right, and the next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disable the noise for a moment because I'm going to animate the camera move using the camera controller. And actually, let's split the process into three stages. First, let's animate uh, the bigger cube. I open the dope sheet to see the keyframes. And at the frame one, I created the keyframe by pressing I and selecting location. Oh, now I'm dragging the camera and create another keyframe at frame 100. That is the first read of our camera motion. For now, it looks very smooth and fancy. Uh, let's make it more exciting uh, with the secondary motion, which we'll do by animating the second cube. Only this time, let's create a more chaotic motion. I'm scrubbing through the timeline, uh, moving the camera by pressing G and creating the keyframes by pressing I and selecting location. And that looks awesome, I think. Uh, it's already started to look like a handheld camera motion. Now let's animate the third controller. The process stays the same, only now we'll be animating the rotation. Uh, so scrub through the timeline and create a bunch of keyframes. Kind of a rapid movement of the camera as if the hand holding the camera is shaking a bit. And that is the third read of the camera motion, looking good so far. Here you can see the textured view for our photo scanned model. And photo scanned models are a hell of a fun. I just can't get enough of them. All right, fine, and the next step is to combine the noise from the noise controller with the camera move. Let's jump into the graph view and enable the noise on the Z location that we've set up. Now you can see it shaking so darn hard and that's not the result we want. That's obviously too much, even for our crazy camera movement. Even if you reduce the strength a bit, uh, it's still a problem because it's shaking too badly. We need to find a way to constrain to limit this motion somehow. So the next step will be to tweak the intensity of the camera shake. There are at least two ways to do it. The first one is uh, to use a restrict frame range option of the graph editor. Here I'm setting the end frame to the frame 40. And what it means is that the noise will stop at frame 40 completely. Also you can apply smooth fall off by setting in and out frames. And here you can see the difference between the unconstrained noise, the noise constrained to the 40 frames. After that it just stops. And at the bottom you can see the noise, that is constrained to the 40 frames range, and also is smoothed out and disappearing slowly. Now I'm previewing the animation and you can see that the shake stops at the frame 40. Okay, now I'm going to show you the different way uh, to manipulate the noise. And personally, I think that's a more exciting way uh, to deal with it. Let's select the camera and open the constraints tab. And there is an influence slider in the constraints tab, we can animate it. For example, let's jump to frame 0 and set the influence to 1. In other words, uh, on the frame 1, the camera will shake in badly. I'm gonna right click on it and hit insert keyframe. And in the dope sheet editor, you can see we created a keyframe. And now let's move to the frame 20 and set the influence to something like uh, 0 0.2 to have just a very little amount of noise going on. And here is how you do it. And I created a few more keyframes of the influence. And the next step is to render the OpenGL preview. OpenGL is the fast way to get a glimpse of your animation. So let's go ahead and press render and uh, OpenGL render animation. Wait a bit uh, for the render to finish. And now after render is finished, uh, you should be able to press render and select play rendered animation or just hit Ctrl and F11. And that is the handheld camera motion that we've created. And honestly, I love how it looks. I think that has a look and feel of the real handheld camera motion. That concludes this tutorial. And if you enjoyed it, feel free to subscribe to my newsletter. I really appreciate it. Thank you. That was Gleb Alexander for CreativeShrimp.com. And we'll change the world of computer graphics.